Taram and good morning to each and every one of you and Inder thank you for your kind invitation. Well it's a pleasure. Um this is long overdue actually. <laughs> and um you know I, I, I person that I spoke to about you was really Aruna. Ah, and yes. um you know she was talking so much about you and uh, all the, and got very excited about it. Mm-hmm. And then you were out of the country yes. and then we spoke you were back and then you had to go again. Almost a year of yeah, back and forth. Yeah yeah. So yes. it's uh, been uh, long overdue. But um we are here right now and I've been talking about you for the past week I told our listeners I even got a few calls well oh. uh people asking me um <laughs> if you are the same person from X Y whatever it may be <laughs> uh and I said yes you're that person but I am also new to you I see um I've never had the opportunity of um conducting an interview with you mm-hmm. and I'm looking forward to doing that right now so Certainly. um for the benefit of our listeners who never had the opportunity because heritage radio definitely caters for a wide cross section of of, of people and for the benefit of those who don't know uh much about you um you can go ahead and introduce yourself to them let them get to know you a little bit a bit more okay so a lot of people know me as a visionary or a psychic um i also have a facebook page where i write you know on a daily basis about visions and so on mm-hmm. but uh personally um you know my real name is devika gachada i was born in trinidad and uh, i grew up in san juan i went away when i was about 19 years old i went to new york city and i have two children i'm divorced if mm-hmm. anybody wants to know and i've had a normal life a regular mm-hmm. life where i try to fit in with a normal crowd have a normal family life but it never worked out that way mm-hmm. because of this calling i tried many times to run from it and um i knew i was different from a child growing up mm-hmm. uh when i was 10 years old i went to san juan presbyterian school And when I was 10 years old I remember sitting outside during lunch time and saying I want to go home and I was looking up at the sun thinking you know that is my home mm-hmm. and then I remembered my father my my physical my biological father as he say and I wondered how would he feel if I had to go back because mm-hmm. we were very close to our father and I remember thinking if I go home my father will miss me. And that was one of the first visions I would say I had growing up. And then when I, you know, uh going through my years from junior to high school and even moving to college in America, having children, I always knew things and I was always different, but I always try to run from it. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, pundits and um pastors, they don't talk about stuff like this. Mm-hmm. They tell you if, you know, this is you're seeing things or you're hearing things, then something is psychologically wrong with you. Um what made me realize, you know, like uh I worked for an investment bank in New York City. Mm-hmm. and uh, my children were very very small and walking straight to fifth on 5th avenue i remember you know dodging real people be- um dodging dead people as they say and walking into real life people because the souls that crossed they are much more healthy and much more alive you're than the ones dod- that are alive you're dodging dead people the Do- dodging li- um dead people because on, on i and bumping into live people because i thought mm-hmm. they were much more i thought it was you know new york city in the city itself is always crowded a lot of people walking back and forth and and you have to go with the flow especially during lunch time so no 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 this may seem i'm going too um, fast yeah this may seem like um you know just yesterday for you uh-huh. but for somebody like me listening for the first time i have to take in all that you a young person growing up in san juan mm-hmm. average person mm-hmm. when did you realize that you have that something is different about you that you have an ability when my grandfather died mm-hmm. um you know a long time ago <laughs> uh the box the coffin would stay overnight Mm-hmm. And I was sitting I was sitting next to the coffin because we had to be you know he was he was also from Sanwa. How old were you at this time? I was very young. I was under 12. Okay. I was under 10 actually. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. And talking to him. And then my grandmother and my uncles came up and they said, "Who are you talking to?" And I said, "Aja." And I remember them saying, "That is not true. Go in your room." because it was already after 8 and I didn't want And then they were already emotional about the whole thing. Right, exactly because my grandfather died unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. So, I remember, you know, people saying, you know, she, you know, she can see things or she knows things, but that is not normal. Again, our Hindu scriptures talk about it, but the pundits never spoke about it in mm-hmm. open. So here it was, here it was, I was different. And my father told me, "Be careful what you say because he put me to sit down one mm-hmm. day and he said and and he said to me, "Dave, be careful." Mm-hmm. 
people will think you are crazy. Not only that, I mean, the world, uh, we are accustomed to dealing with things that we know. But we don't know about, we tend to fear and we tend to react to it in a very different way. Right, so... F- Right, mm. so at that time, which mm. was a very long time ago, it was normal. Yeah. You know? What was the conversation you were having with your with your grandfather? I was asking him. I mean, here you are. You just lost uh, your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Assume that you were close to him. Yes. And do you <clears throat> real, is this the first time that you're actually having a conversation with somebody who passed on? Passed on. Correct. Uh, yes. This is the first time. What okay. was your reaction? Okay, first I have to tell you, he died two days after, he died on July 12th. Mm-hmm. And um, when he passed, you know, he was sitting eating a bread and cheese sandwich. And as I said, he wasn't too far from where we lived in San Juan. So when everybody was uh, wondering if he was still alive, his head was tilted backwards. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to figure out, put him on the ground and stuff. The bread and cheese sandwich was sitting right on the table. And I you know yes to them he was dead but to me he wasn't dead so i ate his bread and cheese sandwich i finished it off it was already two o'clock after lunch and nobody worried about us eating Mm -hmm. i was still very young but i remember all these things like if it was yesterday Mm -hmm. and thinking well okay so fine he doesn't want his bread and cheese sandwich i'll eat it so you're thinking that he's alive there well no because Because we know he's physically dead yeah but to me i wasn't seeing him dead i was seeing him right there you were seeing him there right there so i'm like okay fine if nobody wants this cheese and bread I'm hungry. I'm so gonna you eat. weren't afraid? No. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. I was never afraid because people were crying and my grandmother was there screaming. And I was here, I was taking his, his food and eating it, what he was um, eating prior to passing away. Mm-hmm. So it was normal for me. So with the conversation, like you asked me, you know, what happened that night for the wake where his body was right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember everything like yesterday. It was a black coffin. It was beautiful, a beautiful. We were sooner. My grandfather was Sunerani's, um, so it was like a lot of flowers and all these type of things have to be preparation have to be done. And uh, the conversation went something like this, you know, Aja, you promised me a present and you never gave it to me. What? When are you going to give it to me? Because he was supposed for my birthday. I said, Aja, where is my present? And he did not. Um, give me a present he told me it was his birthday too because he was Mm -hmm. you know two days prior to him passing he was very healthy Mm -hmm. so uh basically it was a normal conversation that i remember like yesterday but what was the answer the answer was smiles nothing but smiles i I, he didn't he did not respond because he was just smiling he knew i knew he was he was alive although his physical body was dead but nobody else knew that so that's why you know even up to today until today we cry and we grieve over our loved ones when in fact they are not dead something a soul cannot be dead the hindu scriptures the bhagavad gita says that you mm. know so so how long did you uh continue to see your grandfather well meaning it, you saw him there at that point in time mm-hmm. um how long after did you uh, continue to see interact with him before he actually left well, the funeral, after the funeral, when mm. you remember, I to, as I told you before, mm. the night of the wake, you know, when people were asking me who I was talking to. Mm-hmm. So when my father told me after the funeral, he put me to sit down and he said, Dave, this is not normal. Don't do this or don't say anything to anybody because you'll end up, they'll say you are mad. Yeah. So I cut it off. I Even if I saw him or I saw mm. things or knew things, I, I never kept, said kept it. Quiet. I had to keep quiet. I had to keep quiet. Mm. So... Um, so just after the funeral, and then uh, you didn't see your grandfather. No, because I, I started living a normal life. I couldn't. Mm. And um, then, what was your next experience? I mean, obviously, you're trying to stifle this because oh, yeah, you're a young life. child growing up. You have um, the adults, people who you respect, people who are your 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 role models, telling you, "Listen, this is not a normal thing, mm-hmm. and don't do this because it's going to look bad." Let's right. put it that way. And we don't want anybody thinking ill of you. Right. So you started thinking about it and you said, yeah, maybe uh, that's right. So what was natural to you, you know, have to be, you have to suppress this. Correct. Um, at one point in time, did you realize, you know, I can no longer suppress this. Uh, this is something I know I have to welcome and I have to accept in my life. And I have to use it to do something else. Oh, um, my son is 21 years old. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, when he was you know he was growing in my tummy i knew what he was looking i knew what he would look like i knew what he would be i knew everything about him and i tried to suppress that as well like okay so nobody wants to hear any of this and after he was born um, a lot of things happened you know the divorce happened a lot of changes took place a lot of hardships took place and i started to question you know at one point i was actually homeless in new york city and you know in in new york city you're not allowed to pick anybody's flowers and across the street from where i lived um when i got a place with a couple of friends girlfriends i was staying in a basement with a couple of women and one morning i woke up and i took the flower i it was a nice um i can't remember the name but i picked the flower and i put bought it home and one of the ladies she had a picture of durga ma and i put the flower in a little cup of water in front of durga ma and i said prove to me what i whatever you you have been telling me prove to me it's true and believe me inder that flower started to blossom in that water in the basement mm. and that was a sign a clear sign that something was totally okay so you know i i something some some mission something or something happening. something is happening mm. so with my friends and their children as well i would play games with them mm. you know even my daughter she was a little older than my son mm. so i would t- i would tell her i know this about you in school i know that so truthfully i was really testing people my friends my close family you know and that's how i started up and obviously at that point in time your mindset started changing you, oh, you, you decided absolutely well, i was struggling and mm. i said to god i said listen this is between you and i as i said before i was homeless at one point mm. uh, because i was taking care of an old lady and she passed and i had nowhere to go and um i sl- i remember sleeping in my car and i said god if you give me a house i promise you i will do whatever you want whatever you ask of me i promise you i will do that everything and oh god by the way i promise i'll never change my accent because i i always thought i but luckily I, you went in trinidad so you can call kamla name for house well <laughs> well i call her now it doesn't matter because i ain't got a new house so <laughs> i don't she cares <laughs> yeah i just uh, joke i know all right so i remember saying you know that and i when i got the house um uh, well from that time in 1994 to two, well to 2001 things were happening i i were already changing spiritually i couldn't stand the smell of meat i couldn't stand you know certain mm. people you know those type of things being out there you know i was also in school mm. i was going to school as well raising two young children by myself and trying to have a normal life and i couldn't even my friends at, from college in new york city they told me recently they said you are always weird you were yeah. always weird they never said anything like you were different they said weird mm. so everybody thought i was weird So you are here you are realizing that you have some ability. Mhm. And like every other gift, it takes us time to realize what it is mm-hmm. and then learn how to use it. So you're telling me that you uh, before uh that you are bumping into but well, let's say can I say spirits, right? Yeah. You're bumping into spirits on this street. Now this is not what everybody else is seeing. Correct. Everybody else on the roadside are basically dodging the people in front of them. Right. But here you are in a position where you're walking on the streets and you're not only seeing the people that are there, the normal people, but you're also seeing the spirits and and you're not scared. No, I wasn't scared because they looked more alive than normal they living look. people. So how can you tell which is which? It's after a while I realized, I'll tell you an experience I had that made me realize that I can actually see dead people clearly. uh this was again uh, 90s and a friend of mine a classmate of mine bought over one of her friends for a reading and um <laughs> when she came i saw her father right her father came through he passed over they mm-hmm. were from trinidad so he passed over here in trinidad and i saw his hands behind his back like old people you know a long time how they would walk around and stuff mm-hmm. and i told her i said Oh your father used to walk around like this he looked like this you know he dressed like this he his features I I described him to a T and at that point she didn't say he was dead so I said you know your father is standing right there and but it was weird because he came in the door with her they came to my house and okay. he came in the door with her so I'm like you know why is your father standing there not saying a word he could he could talk to me you know it's no big deal and then she says my he father is dead 
And I'm like, what? Uh, he said, excuse me, give me two minutes. I ran to the bathroom. I washed my face and I came back. I was saying, get out of here. You all need to leave because this is... N-. And they were like, no, no, D, you have to you have to read for me. You you didn't finish. But you, didn't I, ke- you didn't cater for that. No, I happening. was shocked. I was yeah. I didn't cater to see that spirit. And it's, because and it was so... Just like a normal, alive. Yeah, thing. he was very alive. And I yeah. descri- I, I'm like, so your I'm father... I'm afraid to ask you if you've seen anybody inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Good vibration. Because I'm about to run out of these <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 not at all. Um, because it, it's like normal for me now, after mm-hmm. so long. It um, doesn't matter. When I see a soul that comes over, I tell them to leave me alone. Don't mm-hmm. harass me, which I get a lot of. A lot of spirits, actually. But like before to- you go into that aspect, because I mean, I want to take my time with this thing. Yeah? <laughs> because I'm slowly going down the road with it. Mm-hmm. Now, before you are unable to tell which one is which. Right. Because okay, you're bumping into it. But right. can you now tell the difference with the spirits and the people yes. normal? Yes. Okay, yeah, great. but sometimes when mm. I'm doing readings, the souls come through so clear, much more clear cut than the person who's calling for a reading. Eh? Mm-hmm. Because you have people who call me, they are depressed, they are sad, they are down on their, their luck. And then a loved one is coming through talking to me and saying normal things, you know. Mm-hmm. They, that spirit would look much more alive than a depressed person, mm. a depressed body. Okay, so let's take a moment, folks, to um, absorb all of that. When we come back after this break, we'll be finding out more about the spirits. What exactly is a reading? What is about? What? How does that help a person? And maybe a little bit later on, we talk about the different kinds of spirits and how your ability can help any person. This is Raski Rangoli on Heritage Radio 101.7 FM. Our guest today, Sister Devi. Coming to you with the kind compliments of um, giving us the opportunity as well to, to, to interview her. And I know she's more accustomed with people calling in and doing the reading. Yes, folks, I know everybody is texting me and asking me, um, when they can call and do a reading. Give me just a few moments. Let me just talk a little bit with Sister Davy, and then you will get your opportunity to do your readings. All right? So, now, the question I'm going to ask you now is, we have reached a point where um, you just said someone came in and to do a reading, mm-hmm. and um, then you saw they came in with their grandfather and only realized after that uh, the person was not alive. Right. Right. How can you tell now? Um, Because back then, obviously, not having the experience, you can't tell then. So now that you have the experience, you're able to know. Uh, Obviously, it's all about a mood too. I mean, it's like anybody anybody else. You could be in a mood to talk with somebody. You cannot be in a mood to talk with somebody. That's normal human nature, right? True, true. And depending on, you know, where you are at that point in time. How are you able to tell us now? Well... Um, because the souls come through with their behavioral patterns they had when they were alive, um, oh. which <laughs> they come through with everything. So let's say they had desires, a desire to eat a special food. Mm-hmm. They will come through like that saying, I want something to eat. Sometimes they are very loud. You know, there are ob- obnoxious people out there, yeah. right? Sometimes they will behave like that. They will come through like that. So it's it's very easy for me because, like I said, I've been doing this such a long time. Mm-hmm. The experience taught you how to tell them yes, apart. Yes, certainly. Yeah. You know, that, that reminds me of the movie called Sixth Sense. I, I, um, when I saw that, yeah. it reminded me of me. Yeah, because you know what caught me in the, the entire movie is that he, the little boy is telling Bruce Willis uh, about his experience and what he yes. sees and all these things. And only to realize at the end of it, Bruce Willis himself was, was not alive. Right, but do you know th- the same thing with the movie Ghost? Mm. Because Ghost, actually, they took that out of the Vedas, the mm. Hindu scriptures, the ancient scriptures. Mm. The same thing with Sixth Sense. Mm. Uh, these movies were based on truth, true yeah. knowledge. Yeah. And as I said before, these abilities, I don't have anything. Nothing belongs to me. Mm. I am only a medium. Okay, mm. meaning that I am the go-between. You know, like if you're buying a house and you have to get a broker, it's oh. the same thing, right? Mm. So these, it's uh, the knowledge that I have is called Sidhis. Mm. Uh, it's Lord Ganesh. He has two wives, um, Ridhi and Sidhi, meaning intellect and, um, you know, abilities or awareness. You know, uh, it's like Hanuman. If you look, if some of you Google the word Sidhis, you will see that these things are real. Even in Buddhist text, ancient text these uh, monks 
could have seen the souls that crossed very easily and not just souls that crossed mm -hmm. i can see deities i can see gods um celestial beings i can see demons i can see because my my senses are opened my third eye as they say is opened mm -hmm. um what i've seen in um well more or less is in the movies okay because i can't say that i've had um knock on wood any kind of experience <laughs> and i really don't want to have any kind of thing like that but from what i've seen in movies uh, uh, especially like in the sixth sense and uh, mm -hmm. uh, similar in nature you would you would see where the ghosts themselves are trying to send a message to the person um who's alive mm -hmm. Uh, maybe in in the in the case in in, in sixth sense, they were trying to use the little boy as a medium mm -hmm. to reach their loved ones to let them know. Well, this is what has happened. Now, when they come to the boy, uh, obviously um, he not knowing what it is until he developed the ability to realize. Actually, it's help they want you. They they want help because they can't just go to each and everybody because nobody else can't see them. Right. Only he can see. Okay. So then they realize what well, there was one experience with the little girl. Um, that kept coming back to him and she was vomiting and so on. Right. Because as you just mentioned, mm -hmm. they are in the state they were just before they died. That's and this right. was going with her. And in the movie itself, she was poisoned by her stepmother Right. Uh, in the movie. Mm -hmm. And she wanted, she had proof of it in, in the form of a videotape that mm -hmm. she videotaped herself. And she wanted the father to know what was going on and she she directed the little boy where to go get the tape and give it to the father on the day of the wed of the of the funeral yeah. um do you have experience like this where quite a lot mm -hmm. um we have I've been called on by the police the, in this country and also in the americas mm -hmm. um you know people call and ask me for help mm -hmm. with certain things even if you know um lost bodies that cannot be found mm -hmm. um you know that's it's easy for me to, to locate the bodies through um, communicating with the soul that cross. Sometimes souls doesn't know that they crossed. Let's say mm -hmm. they passed via drowning or they passed in a massive or a fire or an accident. The soul does not realize that it is on the other side. So they don't realize that they They don't dead. know that they are dead, right? We use the word, you know, dead, so right? Normal. Right. What usually I would have to do is when the family calls me for a reading and they said, you know, I want to know how my loved one is doing. I would have to ask for their full name and also a nickname because it's for me to pull that soul to let him or her know that they are no longer in our realm, that they crossed over, they passed on. So sometimes it's like, you you know, there are certain areas, of course, in Trinidad, especially um, Valencia, mm. Valencia stretch where when we are, we're driving, I would tell Brother Anil or the other members, my friends, hey, listen, there's a spirit standing right there or a ghost standing there because they will, um, they died by accident, but they did mm. not know that they crossed. And that's something that probably recently happened. Not really. No, no. no. So they're still there. Do you, yeah. Some areas of Trinidad and Tobago where a lot of accidents take place, mm. maybe by the Nagar or um, somewhere in Gasparillo, I believe, mm. you'll find more and more accidents taking place because there are souls there still waiting to cross. And families need to do more prayer, whether you're Christian, Muslim or Hindu, you know, prayers and more devotion, you know, to let the soul go into the light. But that's for another topic. Has I it, think you're trying it, to... Has it piqued your curiosity to ask the question to one of those um, individuals or souls? Mm -hmm. um, what is it like to be on that side? Oh, many well, I mean, times. I mean, I mean, well, for the ones who is aware that they are lying, not right. the ones who are not, because them, as far as they're concerned, they're still there with everybody else. Right. Um, quite, it's very normal for me now. I have commun I, I communicate with the souls on a normal basis. Mm -hmm. Like I would ask them, what? That is why I change my whole life. You know, um, I, I live according to the scriptures now because of what they showed me. Mm -hmm. If you know, like a lot of people do, make you know, do bad things and stuff, and they preach. They they would say one thing and do something else. You know that old saying: "Do as I say, not as I do." Yeah. Right. I'm not bashing anybody, but it's because they don't realize that the souls are watching them and laughing. So mm. for me, being in contact with a soul on a regular basis, souls, I would say they taught me quite a lot. My brother that passed or my sister that passed or friends that passed, my parents, grandparents, it's very easy for me to see them and communicate with them. So if I'm going down the wrong path, sometimes they might be the one. But to, to tell me well the way you're going wrong or whatever mm. it's very easy for me now in there very very easy it's like a normal thing so my next question is um what exactly is a reading ah 
Well, a reading, you you know, you have tarot readers, mm -hmm. or you have palm readers, mm -hmm. or you have astrologer readers. Mm -hmm. The reading that I conduct is called an Akashic reading, meaning that Akash means space. So I don't need a physical book in front of me. Mm -hmm. I believe everything that we are looking for on the outside is really not on the outside of us. It's actually within us. So if everything is, is, is within me, that energy field is within me, I can communicate out you know, outwardly or soul world or spiritual world, as they say. So the Akashic Record is a place that is called the Hall of Records, where everything is stored, your past, your present and your future. Mm -hmm. Every, every lifetime is stored in that. So if you come to me for a reading, and by the way, I don't go to people and say, oh, you want a reading? Or um, let me let me tell you what I see. I cannot do those things. That is forbidden. And there, there are laws called universal laws as they are human laws. I must adhere to all those laws. So uh, if you come to me and you say, this is I need a reading, I would tell you, well, what would you like to find out about? Because it's not just souls that, um, that I can see or I'm not just a medium. I can also see inside of the human body. How do I do that? It's the same way I can see souls or I can see planets or I can see the celestial beings. You know, so it's the same. It's easy. Again, I can see inside the human body via the third eye, meaning my two physical eyes. I do not see with those. I only see through the third eye, which is through meditation and awakening, spiritual awakening. Now, let me just say this. A lot of people think that this happened to me in this life. This is not the first life that I've been going through this. I've been through this many lifetimes before and I'm finishing off these um, siddhis or these psychic abilities in this life. Personally, I wish I didn't have to do these things because it holds me back from my spiritual growth. I uh, wish I, uh, you know, I wish I can be in, in yoga 24 seven, but this is my lesson. Sometimes I say it's a curse, but this is what I have to do hmm. in this life. Okay. Um, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> We, we have to take a short break and um, folks, if you want to call, but you just heard what the reading is all about. Um, By the way, you mm -hmm. don't need to give me your full name. You don't need to give me a date of birth. Mm -hmm. Just be specific. One question. So, you know, be specific and we can, uh, it, it's easy. All right. So the number to call will be 628-4846 and 628-3896. Now, we're going to take a few calls right now. And uh, what's what's the rule? One question they're gonna ask, well, right? Well, you know, so many people know me now mm. that they let's let's go along with it. Let's see right. how it goes and, and interact with them. Right. In that way, give them an opportunity mm. as well to express themselves. Now, I want to give as many people as the, uh, as as we can the opportunity. Because well, one person holds back the entire line, and that makes it kind of deprives anybody because we may have about that. fifteen minutes, probably a little, little bit less, okay. uh, to do right. So let's okay, go straight go to the line. Opinions. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. good morning. Would it be okay for me to ask for a general reading? A general reading? Okay. What I'm picking up is that you're very tired. You know, you, um, you have to be careful of um, like diabetes or eye problems. Are you having any situ any problems like that? Well, eyes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're also, you have to watch for arthritis. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I do hope you're taking vitamins because as you grow older, you find your bones are becoming more brittle or your back is hurting a lot. Is that true? Um, the back pain here. Yeah, so be careful also of that going to your knees and your feet. Okay? okay. All right. So um, have a great day. You know, as uh, Inder rightfully said, we need to take as many calls as possible. Thank you very much, Kola. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So, Inga, aren't you curious as to how I do this? I mean, aren't you going to ask me, well, how, how, how is it so easy for you to zone in on these people without well, knowing who they are? Well, I was about to ask you that, uh, but <laughs> let me just take this call and then we will get into how. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Diana. Um, um, I just like to know I'm trying to get pregnant. Um. Do you see any children in my life? Okay, you are very shaky. Your, you know, not that your bones are weak. Uh, you have to watch your diet because I feel like your diet has something to do with why you cannot get pregnant. Do not drink uh, t uh, tap water uh, because of the lead or the metals in the water. And that can be a reason. Do you feel tired a lot when you wake up on mornings? Do you feel drained? Yeah. 
Yeah, I can sleep at night sometimes. Uh, right, because do you also feel something is um, uh, bothering you? Like if you are in the kitchen and you turn back yes. thinking somebody's there and they are not there. Do yes, you sense something yes. there? Yes. Right. There are spirits around. Not, don't be afraid. And for those of you who are listening, there is nothing to be afraid of. My advice is uh, simple. Uh, what religion are you? Christian. Okay. I would recommend you light a red candle. Keep it lighted. Or you can put a glass of water with um, some camphor in it and keep it okay. in your room. But there, there are negative energies there and you need to cleanse out your property. Get some holy, holy water. And yeah. pray to Christ and Mother Mary. Say that again? You need to get some holy water. Sprinkle it around your house. Yeah. And you need to pray to Christ, Jesus, yeah. and also okay. to Mother Mary. And especially okay. to Mother Mary to get pregnant. Okay. Okay, I don't you. see any problems with you why you cannot get pregnant, you know. Your diet is certainly off. You, you really have to watch that. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, then. So, to answer the question, um, tell us, how are you able to tell or pick up that vibration from that person? And, and, and because they're just calling. Okay. Um, I go directly to the problem. She said that she had problems with her tummy or she wanted to get mm. pregnant. Yeah. The thing was, it wasn't that she could not get pregnant. The problem was the water and her diet. She was either losing too much weight or gaining too much weight. At the same time, what I'm doing, that you cannot see that I'm doing because I'm physically here, mm -hmm. but I'm also there. So I'm astral traveling while I'm doing this. I can be a couple of places at once. Again, don't be afraid. I don't do it without permission. Mm -hmm. And while I am there, I so can you just see. went to her there? Yeah. Don't be afraid. In that. No, I, I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid. Okay. I, I just I'm, so, I'm taking it. Right. I, now. <laughs> I'm soaking in all our information, you know. So. While I'm there, I can, I'm actually in the middle of a house. And I'm looking around and I can see spirits. I can see her in the kitchen and I can see things behind her watching her. Spirits, bad spirits, not souls, not ancestor souls, but negative energies that, and, and you know, that's mm. for another time. But it, it's spirits that are trying to get her attention or draining her attention. So when she's asleep, mm. the spirit will come and take her energy or through her breath that is why we need to pray we need to say psalms or we need to say the um the chalisa or mm. mantras it's very whatever important really just pursuing whatever that. is exactly hmm. hello good morning hello morning morning sir um just having a back pain sister i don't know if you tell me anything um when you were younger you were in a bad accident did you fall off something or were you in a car accident yeah, I had uh, some accidents and so forth. Yeah, because you had planetary issues. A lot of planets are affecting you. And um, that is the reason why. Now, it doesn't matter if we are Hindu, Christian or Muslim, right? Yeah. But astrology is true religion. Everything is based on astrology. What I am doing here also is astrology, but in a different sense. Okay, so I can yeah. see the planets that are affecting you. So you'll find yourself um, tripping or sliding and falling. That is the reason why you're suffering with so much pain. You have to watch for a slip disc. Uh, it's, it's really bad, like a nerve ending. So you feel like it's spasms. Have you you've gotten spasms? Yeah. Yeah, well, you need to, to go to a chiropractor. Or you need to get this fixed properly. Don't have any and anybody's cracking your back because they will only make it worse. Well, well, sister, I went, I did surgery with a neurosurgeon and many chiropractors other than that. And I, and I don't know where to go again. Okay. I don't know who might be good. Okay, hear what? You need to do some deep, deep breathing exercises. Are you, um, like, do you eat pepper, spicy food? Yeah. Plenty. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the reason why you need to stop eating spicy food. You, you, either you want the taste of the spices or you want the pain. Which one would you choose? No, if I know how to eat the spices, I surely will because it's better than, better, um, no yeah. pain than spices. Believe me when I tell you, the peppers, the spicy food, even curry, too much of curry will cause you to be in more pain because I'm seeing where you're, it's swollen, your joints are swollen from the inside out. Okay, so you might, you know, doctors try to fix you many times and tr trust me, they did a pretty good job with you. But now you need to take up a different role, like a yoga or meditation. Do you need to alkalize the system? Well, alkalizing is pretty good, yes. But he's he has too much spices and mm. that can be acidic. But that's what I'm asking. Yeah. If you have to 
Certainly. So, yeah. um, brother, you need to really fix your diet, change it all together. Yeah. From now on, cut out all spicy food. Even dairy products, you have to watch your dairy intake as well. Well, is co- coffee a good thing? Well, I like coffee, so I don't see why it's not a good thing. Um, <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> well, but it's, it's moderation too. Yeah. I well, think it's yeah, recommended you, you two or three cups for the most. Uh, and eating beyond that becomes acidic as well too. Yeah. But too much, too much yeah. coffee can cause problems. Yeah, but yeah. play with it. You know, watch, drink one cup a day, but certainly get rid of the um, spices, and then you will see. All right. Um, do you have a contact number that maybe? Um, well, are you, you on Facebook? Well, the, the contact information we will get uh, at the at the end of the program, right? So listen out because I want there. I mean, the phone lines are. Ringing. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm calling to get a reading. Uh, what would you like to find out about in general? Uh, I would like to find out about my dad. He passed on? No, he didn't. He did not pass on? No. I can barely hear you. No, he didn't. Okay. But your father is very sick and he wants to pass. It's like he's he, he's very, very sick or he, he's, he complains about being weak all the time. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Yes, it is. And... But he's not listening. Even if you all tell him to eat properly, he doesn't want to listen. He's very stubborn. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I'm yeah. Af- yeah, I'm afraid you cannot change somebody like that. You just have to leave him, you know, um, let him do whatever he wants at this point. He's not going to listen to anyone. He needs uh-huh. to drink like a cup of tools. He tea a day, do. Okay. All right? Because he's okay. on medication? Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, he doesn't feel well at all. He really doesn't feel well. He, he has a lot of burning inside, um, more like um, acid reflux or ulcers. Uh huh. Okay. So, d- does he complain of his hands burning and his feet burning? No, not so much. His feet, but his feet. He doesn't have his feet was amputated. Yeah. But he complains that it's hidden. His e- yeah, because the energy is off balance in his entire body. So I would recommend a, a cup, a hot cup of tea, like Tulsi tea. And even okay. after every meal, that will help him. He's also suffering from headaches as well. Yes, a lot of headaches because he had a stroke recently. Yeah. What you could do, right? It's so easy again. Take your fingertips, put some oil in the fingertips, massage massage it in your hands, heat it up in your hands first, and then massage his head gently. While you're mm-hmm. massaging his head, let him breathe in mm-hmm. all right um yeah. just let him breathe in and out because there is a possibility of a second stroke if because his tongue is heavy even when he's talking to you all sometimes you can't understand what he's saying no because the stroke affected his speech. speech but you all have to watch again because his blood is very thick what i'm seeing it's uh it's, uh, it's not good you know okay. with his health okay okay um all right I so we are taking another call Thanks. You're welcome. Hey. It's never nice to hear bad news. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good nice. morning. Can I get a general reading, please, especially around my health? Your health is relatively okay. You have to watch for kidney stones and stuff like that because I'm seeing some issues around your tummy. Is that true? Well, I have gas um, acid reflux. Yeah. So I'm seeing issues with the kidney as well. And... Um, Again, you know, we, we need to start drinking tea after every meal. And you're, again, if you're eating too much spicy food or too much curry and oily foods, brother, you eat like too much oily food. You have to watch your heart. Okay. okay, watch for cholesterol and stuff because I'm seeing some issues there. I'm also seeing some issues where you're playing with your weight and your throat is sometimes very dry. My throat has an issue also, yes. Yeah, you feel like it's dry or it's... um. It has a... And itch, I cough, and I can't figure it out. I think it's the acid coming back up. No, it's not so much the acid, but we have to also look at the weather. The heat index is high, and also with the sooth, with the, all the, um, you know, the bushfires and stuff. Yes. Um, you need to drink more water, one. And two, you need to have like a pot of hot water, safe, make sure it's safe, with some Vicks Vapor Rub okay. or some eucalyptus oil. Okay. And just put it in there and just breathe it. Breathe it in because um, it, your throat is very dry and that will also affect your hearing and your nasal passage. Okay. All right. I know what we eat and do. Exactly. No, well, I don't eat the, the spices and too much oil, but... Cut out all the fried advice. food and all that kind of thing. Thanks for the advice. You're yeah. doing a great yeah. job, Sister Davy. Yeah. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hi, good morning. Hi, go ahead, dear. 
would like to find out if anything has in me and my food with the family. Okay, you're talking too fast. <laughs> Say that again slowly. I would like to find out if anything bothering me and my little family. And your family? Yeah. If anything is in your home? Yeah. What I see is a lot of anger and temper. A lot of fighting. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Who drinks in that family? Who drinks alcohol? My husband. Right. And so me as well. And you too? Yes, but not as much as him. Okay. There are lots of issues there and you guys are bringing home the spirits. So that whole family, there's like, you feel like you all are cursed? Yeah. Girl, you, I mean, I cannot tell you to stop drinking alcohol overnight. But those mm-hmm. children... But you have to be a little more specific which spirits you're bringing home. Oh, not is good it ones. The, uh, is it the alcohol spirit or yes. is it the other You one? have the alcohol spirits, you have the sex spirits, you have the demons. You you don't know a plethora of evil spirits coming mm-hmm. home with her. Okay, okay. So, so my dear, um, you do, do you all need counseling? I'm not sure. I believe you do. I would, I would have to say, yes, you do need counseling. And um, there are people out here in Trinidad that can help you. Because if you guys are going down that road and then you and your husband fighting after you drink or when you get sober or what have you, it's total corruption. And my advice to you is to take it slow. Go get help. Otherwise, your life is going down the wrong path. And you know something? When you cross, you're going to be like one of those spirits waiting for a drink. Don't go down that road with your husband. Is he, is he worth it? No. He's worth it? Not as, mu- yeah, not as much as the breakup now. Okay. I'm not telling you to leave your husband, you know. I am telling you to behave yourself. Yeah, I know, but um, I'm not saying to break up. I know you wouldn't leave him because you know what? You, the funny thing is you can't stand him, but you don't want anybody else to have him. That's right. <laughs> 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 All right, well, okay. take, take her advice and, and see if you can get some counseling. I think that's a good advice that she gave you because if it's worth it so much, then you can you can, can put in the extra effort there. Okay, right. good luck. Right, good luck, my care. love. Good luck. And unfortunately, that is where we have to leave it. The phone lights are still ringing. Unfortunately, I cannot be able to take those calls. We have that uh, conference coming up shortly. Sister Davy, it's been a pleasure. Same and here, same uh, here. hopefully I will have you next Thursday. I'll put you on the spot. I know that. But, <laughs> but don't worry. We, we will have to fix that date sometime soon to have Sister Davy back in studio. It was just... Uh, if I want to say I try, I'll run to see what's going well, to be happening. Well, yes, and I know people want to know other things. Not their personal life alone, but they want, they, you know, they would like to find out other, have questions mm-hmm. as well. But, hey, check us out on Facebook, Red Chariot Foundation page. You know, you guys know we are all about charity. Whatever donations come in from the readings and whatever donations you give, it goes directly back to charity. Or Sister Davy, S-I-S-T-E-R-R-D-E-V-I on Facebook. Or um, Sister Davy Medical Visionary page where I post my visions and my... Um, my predictions. So God bless you. Thank you so much, Inder. Thank you to Heritage 101.7. As I always say, Heritage is all about intelligent programming. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.